All right, all right, all right. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the, all the early adapters. And I uh, thank you to everybody that's been sending me out uh, messages asking when I was going to start the next podcast. <laughs> so here it is. So this is my uh, Tuesday podcast that I've began uh, doing. Currently, I'm using Spreaker. I really don't know uh, how much longer I'll use Spreaker, uh, but I will um, continue on as long as I can. Uh, I'll try to do as many um, um, podcasts on Spreaker as I can. So uh, like the title says, your next smartphone. Uh, this is a, an interesting subject uh, that uh, a lot of people really... Let me change the microphone here. A lot of people... Uh, techies, non-techies, everybody is going to love to find out what their next smartphone is, just based based on how the media is right now. Uh, everybody definitely is interested in what's going on in Mobile Congress. Even if you're a non-techie, you probably can see some commercials about um, what's going on in Mobile World Congress. So um, there's a lot of phones. I made a video on this the other day. Um, about, uh, you know, some of the devices I liked at, in Mobile World Congress. And, um, you know, there's so many to choose from. I think it's just ma- it's a matter of pricing at this point. You know, OEMs, you know, my last podcast uh, talked about cell phone pricing and smartphone pricing. Uh, but now, you know, it's just a matter of the choices. There are so many choices out there that you can choose from a smartphone it's almost becoming overwhelming. I, I talked about it uh, in uh, several other uh, videos and things like that. I've talked about um, choices, you know, having so many so fast. And a lot of OEMs to me now, are, you know, the question is, are they bringing quality products? Or are they just rushing it out to the market just to try to be first? And as the consumer, you have the power to decide whether or not they're doing it the right way. And the way that you do that is whether or not you purchase their product or not. So um, in this podcast, I kind of wanted to touch on that. You know, what is your next smartphone? What have you been considering, you know, as a, your next smartphone? Uh, uh, what choices are you making? Are you looking at price? Are you looking at a certain OEM? I think at this point in the game, I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of set on staying in the mid-range category. Uh, I am going to have some high-end devices on the channel, obviously, and I'll have them on my YouTube channel. I will have some high-end phones uh, on the YouTube channel that I have. Um, Mr. J.L. Williams on all my social media, so you guys can follow me there on Twitter. Uh, Even on Spreaker here, it's Mr. J.L. Williams. Uh, For those that are joining me live, catching this podcast live, um, it's always Mr. J.L. Williams for all social media platforms. So, for me, huh, I don't know. I've been kind of looking at the LG G6. Now, that's not my first choice for a, a device. I'm actually leaning more towards the Sony um, XZ Premium. I talked about that in my latest video on YouTube. Um, but, uh, again, there's so many choices uh, that that we have now. It's almost like it's overwhelming. And price is always going to play a part with some people. And uh, some people it doesn't matter. Uh, But with specifically with reviewers, we tend to buy everything. You know, we complain about the price. I try to wait for deals, you know. Uh, But as a consumer, what are you choosing? What are you choosing as as your next smartphone? If you need, do do you guys wait two years to update or to upgrade? Does anybody still do that? I remember when that was a thing and the OEMs, you know, the carriers weren't really pushing you so hard uh, like they are now. Now carriers are wanting us to update like every time a new phone comes out. (laughs) Because OEMs are releasing them so fast, you know, it's kind of like, wow, you know, you're you're wanting us to buy a phone every time you release one. And they are, in fact, releasing one every two to three months a new phone is releasing so for for people that do not buy a phone like that you're getting your money's worth like i i mean and i think the only reason i have so many devices because i do product reviews uh but 
if I didn't have, if I didn't do product reviews, like it would be very difficult for me now to step away and just like if I were to decide, okay, I'm not doing product reviews anymore. I'm just going to buy one phone. Knowing what I know now, it would be very difficult to make that decision. It would be extremely difficult because I know how this side works on the techie side. I know how it works. I know what I should buy. I know what processes are efficient. You know, so and I've learned a lot from changing from average consumer to mild tech. Well, I've always been a techie, but just not in the smartphone game. Uh, but um, I've learned a lot by just being on this side. And I think that's something that that once you, you know, you kind of get on this side, it's very difficult to get out. You know, it's it's very difficult. So for those that are out there that um, that are planning on picking up a device, I'm kind of curious what your do you have a favorite OEM? You know, I'm pro BlackBerry and pro pro Samsung. However, you know, it's getting kind of old. And here's what I have to say about, uh, once again, I've said this multiple times, but when an OEM starts releasing device and I feel like it's becoming redundant, what is the purpose of what am I actually getting? And right now, I think pretty much everyone's just pretty much getting hardware. They're getting, you're getting new hardware. The software updates that they're making are so mild and so minimum, you don't even notice. Like there's no way to notice that you're actually getting an actual new device it's almost it's it's just impossible and let me give you an example the galaxy s8 is getting ready to come out no doubt it's going to come out in the next two months or so it will at least be announced in the next two months so with, with that being said i currently have the s7 and the s7 edge now the s7 edge is by far one on a gorgeous device and it's more than capable it's got 7.0 it now has the Grace UI. So is the S7. They, I, I got the update on both. Uh, but I have multiple other devices, um, and uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with them. Now, this is this the this is the reviewer part stepping aside as a consumer. I'm really happy, you know, with the with the current set of phones that I have. You know, but as a techie, I feel obligated to buy them all. <laughs> I don't think that feeling's going to go away. But as a consumer. If I had to, like, at the current stage that I'm at right now, if I had to step away from doing YouTube, if I had to just walk away, like, um, or if I even, if I just decided I'm gone and I had to choose to keep a device, I think I would probably go with, like, the Moto Z Play or the S7 Edge. You know, and if I could only choose one, the S7 Edge has a few more, like, technically it's waterproof and, you know, it doesn't have adoptable storage, but it has an SD card. It has the better cameras. You know, it doesn't have the Moto mods and things like that, but it has pretty good battery. You know, I can get six six hours of screen on time. With the Moto Z Play, I can get like 10. So that would be a hard choice if someone sat me down and said, hey, you know, okay, YouTube's, or YouTube just shuts off. Let's just say YouTube is over. You know, they don't allow any more product reviews. <laughs> you know, you know, you have to find your tech somewhere else. And I just, or I was just like I said, I decided to stop. I don't know. I think I would choose the S7 Edge or the Moto Z Play with the Moto Z Play kind of more towards the top. Like if I didn't have the good deals that I got on so many phones, you know, the Moto Z Play is more than capable. Uh, but the S7 Edge is a much more beautiful device. It's got um, way better cameras. You know, while I don't know if it'll get the updates as the Moto Z Play, who knows, but I will say that the phone has got everything, you know, a, poss a person could possibly want, except for USB Type-C, which is kind of a letdown. It doesn't have USB Type-C, but it has a headphone jack, uh, and that's something that's a plus. It has an SD card slot, it's waterproof, it's a lot more compact than the, than the Moto Z Play. That would actually be a pretty difficult choice now that I'm thinking about it, but if you had to just stop okay so we know the iphone's coming out we know the s8's coming out we know all these new phones are coming out but as of right now um i don't really believe when i hear people say oh you know don't buy last year's tech well the smart thing is to buy last year's tech you know because you can find quote unquote last year's tech which is just a few months ago you can find 2016 devices that launched you can find them at fantastic deals fantastic prices 
you're going to always be able to get some good deals on the previous tech because now now here's one thing that plays out in our favor because they release phones so fast we still get high-end devices at great prices that kind of rhymed we get high-end devices at great prices so current recently on t-mobile and this is just a great example um recently on t-mobile they have the s7 edge for 360 dollars the s7 for 360 and the v20 for 360 if you did not grab one of those ouch you should have jumped on that even if you couldn't afford to buy the 360 at uh at full cost like most people like well i shouldn't say both like some people even if you were not able to get it for $360 full cost, you should have jumped on it and put it on EIP just to get it going and then pay it off later. Or just pay the $15 a month because that was a fantastic deal. It, you know, after you, Technically, after you use it on their network for 40 days, it's unlocked. But in my situation, I was talking to Jose Santana. Shout out to Jose Santana. Um, he was saying you know, he's tried to do the unlock thing before and you know, they didn't unlock it for him. They made him wait. Uh, but... I've yet to experience that. Every time I've called T-Mobile and said, hey, you know, I need my phone unlocked. The app isn't working for the unlock. They say, oh, sure, we don't want to make you wait. They see that it's paid for, and then that's it. Uh, But if you didn't jump on that deal, and also you can hit Best Buy unlock section. If you're not afraid to buy a phone that's refurbished, definitely hit a refurbished section. And Best Buy has some great deals on refurbished phones. And sometimes carriers have uh, really sweet deals on refurbished phones. All carriers will unlock your phone uh, for free. So you don't have to pay for unlocks. But, you know, just just looking at the way the market is right now, you got to ask yourself, if you have an S7 Edge, um, should you upgrade to the S8? Like, what is the reasoning behind you, you upgrading it? They're going to tell you that you got better cameras, you got this, you got that. They're going to sell it to you that way. But in the end, a phone, if it's not a Nexus, it's probably going to have their company's UI on it. And that's just the way it goes. So upgrading sooner than two years, should you even do it? I was telling my sister, Sister Harris, I said, you know, keep your phone. She still has... A mint condition, fully functional, no scratches on it, LG G2. Now, before you shake a leg at that, the LG G2 has a, a 1080p 5.2 inch display, I believe. It's got a curved body. It's, it's a sweet phone. I told her, if it still works, don't upgrade. Keep it. You don't have to upgrade. And her phone still works. I've actually taken her. She, she's had it in a case for six years. <laughs> I took it out of the case. It was like brand new. No scratches on the screen. No nothing. She uses a folio case or something like that. Um, But that's just an example. But, you know, I think if I had to step away from the tech game, the S7 Edge or the Moto Z Play are definitely phones that I would I would probably say, okay, I'm done. You know, if I could choose two, I would definitely take that one and this one for sure. If those had to be my only two, because I don't have any of the Sony premium phones, but I definitely would like to get some of those. And um, if. So okay, so I'm not stepping away from tech, but <laughs> not at the moment. But I definitely am interested in the Sony devices. I've spoken about that on my video, and um, my previous video about Mobile World Congress devices that I like, and I'm excited about the Sony XZ Premium. Now I've seen it online already for twelve hundred bucks. Now obviously, I don't have twelve hundred dollars. Well, I'm not giving twelve hundred dollars to that device right now. I'm gonna wait. It's probably never gonna come to the U.S. Sony's just not getting any love in the U.S. And when they do come to the U.S. They don't bring it like they should, you know. They don't. They don't do. They don't do it like they should. They 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 take the fingerprint readers off when they bring stuff to the U.S. and the last devices. They changed and took stuff away. I don't know. I'm excited about that particular phone, and if I can get one at a good price, I will get one. But you know, the Ultra is another device that you should see on the channel soon. So be looking out for that. I'll have an unboxing video of the Ultra, HTCU Ultra. Uh, and um, some other ZTE devices, hopefully. So, uh, it's your man J. Will. This is podcast number two. What's your next phone? Podcast number two. What's your next phone? There's a chat section on here. I don't really know how it works. <laughs> I could see a message there that I could write something. If, but I, don't, I, I guess people have to be... I don't know who's listening live. I don't know who's listening live until after I see the feed. But um, podcast number two. What's your next phone? I'll see you on the next podcast. Take care.